Hi, I was just sharing in an earlier message about our need to act fast in order to reconnect with Jesus because staying connected to the source of all our peace and all our joy and all our wisdom and all our inward strength, that's the key to living the Christian life as a river of peace and a, and a life filled with joy despite the problems and troubles that come along. All right. Now, here is another way, and it's really at the core of what we need to do, and it's a way that you've been practicing, perhaps without realizing it, because if you're a typical Christian, then you've been coming into church, and there's something about being in church that just, you know, God touches you while you're there. And, and then you come out of church feeling lighter, feeling better connected, on the whole, not every time, I, I don't imagine, but on the whole, you come out feeling lighter, better connected, more alive and feeling like, you know, I can do this. Well, what's happened? I call it, you got the look that gave the shift because it's really a matter of getting our eyes back on Jesus. Now, if any of you were baseball players when you were young, when I was young, our phrase was always keep your eye on the ball. And there was a time when I was pitching to one of the big kids in the neighborhood on our Sandlot baseball diamond. And man, he whacked a line drive that came straight at me. And as I looked at that ball, it got bigger and bigger until it just slammed right into my forehead, knocked me flat on my back. I'm surprised it didn't knock me out. And to this day, I'm glad it didn't hit me in the nose. But, you know, I had a bump and I had a headache probably, but I wasn't going to show the big kids that I was going to be a crybaby or anything. Well, anyway, keeping your eye on the ball well that's an important way to play baseball keeping our eyes on jesus is an important way to actually live the christian life let me give you a couple of scriptures in isaiah the lord says look to me and be saved come on get your eyes back on me get your eyes off the problem get your eyes back on me he's saying that's isaiah 45 22 we could take isaiah 26 3 where he says he will keep him that's you or me in perfect peace wouldn't you love that? Whose mind is stayed on him. In other words, our, if our focus is on him, then we're going to have peace flowing in us. Why? Because the, the phrase finishes because he trusts in him. So whenever we get our eyes back on Jesus the right way, we get our eyes on him the right way, and then the trust comes flooding back in. Because if I'm actually looking through time and space by faith well enough to see something in Jesus is going to restore me to confidence because he is not only the God of all comfort, he's the God of all power. He's the one who loves us best. He, he's got things to show us, things that we could see in him. And I'm not saying you're looking through and you're actually trying to see him, but you're looking through to see by faith the things that are true about him. And as you're doing that, the Holy Spirit will open, look here, the eye of your heart, so that beholding him by the eye of your heart, you begin to get the transformation. And that's what Paul tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. But we all, with unveiled face, now we can see who the Lord of glory is. Beholding the glory of the Lord. Something glorious about our God we're beholding. And we're being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another, for this comes by the Lord who is the Spirit. Now, this is amazing. When I saw this and I understood something of what God was saying to us through this, this is the powerhouse of transformation. As we get our eyes back on Him, as we look to see in Him something that we need to see, we get the shift. We get shifted. We go like, of course you're going to help me. Uh, of course you're going to rescue me. Oh, I've just been crying out to you for mercy, but you're full of mercy, aren't you? And as we get our eyes back on him, the guilt falls away, the regret falls away because we see he's going to bring good out of what just went wrong. The anxiety falls away because we maybe we're seeing in him now, oh, the one that promised he'd never leave us or forsake us. And so guided by the word, enhanced our spiritual light in uh, sight enhanced by the word we see in him the things that we need to see in him to get our eyes off the problem whether it's of self or the world around us our circumstances other people we get our eyes back on jesus and the shift happens this is what happens in church you come into church and the worship lifts you up and you start singing to the lord and your eyes begin to shift off of the problem onto him in some way it's beginning to happen 
or you're listening to the message and something in that message just opens your heart back up to trust the Lord and you realize, oh, he's with me, he's going to help me. Or in prayer, you finally cast, the prayers are taking place and you cast your burden on the Lord. Now what's happened is you're, uh, you'd been going blind, dear saint. And, and you'd been going spiritually blind. Your eyes had gone off the Lord onto darkness and the lights were getting dim. And now that you're looking back in his direction, your eye is being opened. And as it's being opened, you're seeing grace in him. And that grace in you is transforming you back into a being of grace and trust. And so the key to our transformation is in some ways successfully getting our eyes off whatever they're fixed on and back on to the Lord where they were meant to be. And then you just don't have to keep looking steady, 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 steady. No, you've had your trust restored. Your focus is back. You're seeing with the eye of your heart. Oh my goodness, why was I so upset? I've got the Lord with me. In whatever way it's coming to you, you've seen something in Jesus that you needed to see. Now know this, the devil's really good at distracting you you and me, and he's good at getting us to get our eyes off of the Lord. So we have to be correspondingly good, even better at getting our eyes back on Jesus. So you know, imagine me on the picture mount. If I'm, if I'm just throwing the picture and then looking away, man, I'm going to be hit all over my body. You know, I've got to keep my eye on the ball, even if it might sometimes hit me, but you keep your eye on Jesus. He's not going to hit you. He's going to bring you into fellowship with himself. He's never going to reject you, never going to forsake you, but you've got to get your eyes back on him. This is the activity of faith. It's called beholding the Lord. And through beholding him, we get our transformation. Absolutely amazing. I've been saying that the Father is using this one thing to rescue and transform the world, the revelation of Jesus Christ. He is revealing his Son to us. Just at the beginning of our Christian life, Yes, that gets us started. But throughout our whole Christian life, in any moment of need, in any moment where we desire to rise higher in delight, then get your eyes on Jesus. He'll take you there. He'll come through for you. Get your eyes on him. And after a while, we're going to be so attracted to him. We're not going to want to let our eyes go anywhere else. I'm sorry. I'm not looking at you, devil. You can do whatever you want to do. I'm keeping my eyes on the one who's walking with me. Now here's a good prayer. And you can always get more on this at our website for healing, healingstreamsusa.org, where all of these illustrations can be pulled down as free downloads. Father, I renounce trying to change myself by my own stress-filled efforts. Your way of grace is so much better. By beholding Jesus, I'm actually transformed as I trust him and follow his path of peace. Help me get established in this. Alert me when my heart turns away from beholding him. Losing peace is a sure sign you're calling me to return, but I so often ignore it. Save me from falling back into my old patterns. Enable me to keep getting the look that gives the shift as often as it takes until it becomes my new way of life. And oh, what rest for the soul it is to keep our inward gaze fixed upon our mighty friend. See you for the next lesson.